Okay, so we've got an atom here with the nucleus and the electrons and the energy levels. Sometimes what can happen is a free electron can collide with these atomic electrons and transfer its kinetic energy to the atomic electron. And if it gains enough kinetic energy, the atomic electrons will leave the atom completely. This is a one of the ways in which ionization can occur. So ionization here has occurred because a free electron collides with the atomic electron, transferring kinetic energy to the atomic electron, and that was enough energy for the atomic electron to leave the atom completely. What's left over is a charged atom, in other words, an ion. So that's why this process is called an ionization. The ion that's left over is a positive ion because it's missing an electron, which is negative. Okay, another way in which ionization can occur is if the atomic electron absorbs a photon. The photon needs to provide enough energy for the ele atomic electron to leave the atom completely. So this is still ionization, but instead of collision with the free electron is happening because the electron has absorbed a photon. The energy of the photon is equal to HF, but then that needs to be enough for the atom, uh, electron to leave the atom. Again, this is still ionization. We've got a positive ion left over because we've lost a negative charge. Sometimes a free electron, when it collides with atomic electrons, it transfers just enough kinetic energy for the atomic electron to move to a higher energy level. This is called excitation. Okay, so in this case, the kinetic energy transferred has to correspond exactly to the difference in the energy levels between this energy level over here and this energy level over here. So it's moved to a higher energy level, and that's what excitation is. Okay, excitation can also occur if the atomic electron absorbs a photon. The energy of the photon needs to be very specific. It has to be just enough energy for it to go between those two energy levels. It can't be too large or too small. So the energy of the photon needs to correspond the difference between these two uh, energy levels. Again, this causes the electron to move to a higher energy level, and that's excitation. Okay, once these electrons have been excited to a higher energy level by either a collision or absorbing a photon, in the higher energy level, they're unstable. Okay, they want to move back down to their lower energy level. This process is called de-excitation. And when this occurs, the a photon is emitted. And the photon is emitted with energy corresponding to the difference in the energy between the two energy levels is moved from. Okay, so most atoms have more than just two energy levels. So for example, in this case, there's three energy levels. And this electron that's been de-excited can de-excite in many different ways. So one of the ways it can de-excite is go straight down the ground state and you can see now it's emitting a photon a purple photon um, with the energy corresponding to the difference in these energy levels so when it de-excited it could have also gone down in stages so it could have gone from the second to the first excited energy level emitting a red photon like you can see here which is a small gap so it corresponds to a small energy so a longer wavelength and a low frequency one and then it can de-excite from the first excited state to the ground state emitting another photon, this time is blue, which is not as large as the violet we saw when it transitioned from the second to the ground state directly, but this one's still higher energy than from the second to the first excited state. Okay, so we're gonna have the same de-excitation process here, but it's a different element now. Now different elements have different arrangement of energy levels, so the gaps between the energy levels is different. So when this one de-excites, for example, it's, you can see it's emitting different photons, different color photons or corresponding to different frequencies. So this helps us identify different elements because each element has its own unique level of uh, energy level arrangement. And so the difference between the energy levels will also be unique to that element. So uh, the photons emitted will have a cor specific frequency corresponding to those um, energy gaps. Okay, so this de-excitation process leads to something called the emission line spectra. So let's take example for hydrogen, for example. You can see hydrogen has emits four different photons, okay, each one corresponding to a, a different energy level transition. So for example, the red one on the right-hand side here corresponds to a small energy gap because red is low energy uh, a photon. So that means the energy gap would have been small. While the violet over here corresponds to a large energy gap uh, transition. When it moves down, when it decides, it emitted a photon with a very high energy, and that corresponds to violet light. Okay, another interesting process that can happen is when you shine white light at, at an atom like this. White light is made out of all the different wavelengths of the visible spectrum. And these atomic electrons can absorb some of those photons in that continuous spectrum and they can use that energy to move to a higher energy level like this so they can go from the ground state to the, uh, to the second excited state or from the ground state to the first and then the second. So the atomic electrons are absorbing photons with frequencies corresponding to those 
energy difference in the energy levels because at the atomic electrons can't exist between the energy levels. That's not possible for them to be there. So what's going to happen is the energy absorbed is going to be missing from the light that's coming out of past the atoms. So we have three lines here. These are what we call absorption lines. Okay, so just like in emission line spectra where there's certain frequencies being emitted due to the de excitation of electrons from a high energy level, here we have excitation of electrons from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. And that's called leading to the, some photons missing from the continuous spectrum.